Today we are talking all about something very special going on in Denver around the time that this podcast is going to be on air. It is the 48 hour film festival. That's right, folks. The thing we talked about with veteran Manuel Contreras, it's going on right now. The dates are July 29th to the 31st. So maybe if you are interested in getting on that stage winning those awards making a movie in in 48 hours making in 24 hours and then editing it don't forget you actually have to edit that movie now is the time to get in the zone get your friends together get a plan together now is the time to look at denver 48 film project on instagram it's denver 48 fp on instagram and get all the information if you're a little late you maybe you want to reserve your seats because they'll sell out fast too but in the meantime today we have the city producer for the project his name is Ilya kushner and he's here with us today Ilya, say hello howdy so Ilya, yeah we're interested in talking to you because you facilitate something very special here in denver you something for that for 48 hours dozens of movies get made some of them don't get finished well, a lot of them get made and then they do something even more special when they get to the winning stage of your festival. They go somewhere completely new. Tell us about what made you start this project here in Denver. Well, um, I'm currently the city producer. I didn't really start it in Denver. Um, in 2006 was when, when the Denver 48 Hour Film Project started here. Um, so essentially any cities can have uh, their own producer. Um, it's all based out of Washington, D.C. And it, um, I mean, last year there was a hundred uh, different cities competed and had best films uh, from their cities. So um, I didn't really found it here, but I, I facilitate it here. So my role specifically is to just um, follow the guidelines set forth by corporate, which is you know, the films need to be made in in 48 hours. I provide like genres for all the teams and then give out the criteria for making your film, which is a character, a prop, and a line of dialogue. So Friday at 7 p.m. Um, is when it's off to the races. So pretty much, you know, say you draw film noir or horror or a buddy film or fish out of water. And, um, and now... All the teams have to make their films from the same thing. So the character could be, um, you know, a hairdresser, and the prop can be a lamp. And the line of dialogue is, "Why did you do that to me?" You know. So it's like, cool. Now we just have to make a film from from those elements. And so you shoot it, like you write it, you shoot it, you edit it. Music, four to seven minute short film, all within forty eight hours. Now, I'm sure you have many special stories about all the ones you've seen since you've taken over the project here in Denver, but I really want to talk about why you do it, because this is something that you uh, facilitate, so you provide the, the funds for it, you make it happen, you put on the show at the bug. I really want to know why someone would do that to themselves. <laughs> uh, Hunter, that's a really great question. I... What I tell people, I tell people I always tell them the same thing. If you can make a film in 48 hours, you can do anything. Uh, it's, it's like this little microcosm situation. You're, you're, you will experience all the things. And I describe it as the three T's. Um, you have a tight budget, time constraint, and troubleshooting. Those are the three things you're going to experience in that weekend. And if you can deal with that and complete something, then you can do anything. And you can take those lessons that you learned over that weekend and incorporate them into your personal life or your business life, whatever. You can like integrate that. So for example, uh, I always give the example of like, uh, you have a team put together and your sound guy is sick now. And so you don't have somebody running sound. Well, you know what, Jimmy, you're doing sound now. Hey, uh, our editor bailed on the weekend. Does anybody have any editing experience? Oh, you used Premiere once? Okay, cool. Well, you're editing our film now, you know? And 
these types of things are going to happen. All the things are going to go wrong. And so the question is, is how do you deal with it? How do you deal with somebody not showing up? How do you deal with an actor that's not like you had a, an actor selected for your lead role, but you drew a different genre. And now, you know what? That actor's not going to work at all. You're going to have to find somebody else. Well, actually, somebody on the crew is going to be great for this story that you wrote. So it's like being quick on your feet, making decisions, and getting things done. And if you can come out of it with a product, I'm not saying it's a good, I'm not, are you going to make a good film? Maybe. Are you going to make something funny? Maybe. It might be amazing. You might make something that's terrible. I made so many terrible films, I can't even tell you. I look at all my films and I think that they're just like terrible. But guess what? The experience was amazing. And so, yeah, I mean, that's what I want to facilitate for other people to have that experience. I'm glad you mentioned that uh, you made terrible films. So you were someone who, in the film project, you were someone who participated for many years. Yes. And you... Um, made what what genres did you have uh the last one that i had um when i was running a team was fish out of water which is such a strange genre um but i was really lucky um one of my really close friends um he wrote and acted in it and he really he really embodied that character and we actually ended up winning best use of character that year um and it was because of him my friend grant um and he was just like amazing in this role uh so i like learned you know that genre is so strange it's just like how you know how do you cr like write a character for this you know somebody that's uh put in a put you know in a position that they're just not used to very uncomfortable you know so like how do you tell a story that way um so it, it really took took me out of my comfort zone to do a genre like that you know this uh, this 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 competition is you know it's a narrative-based comp, uh, uh, competition, you know? You're making a narrative. And so that's really interesting. You know, a lot of people maybe they do commercial work or they do, you know, in their personal life, they make uh, abstract or artistic films, you know? So this is a narrative-based approach. And I think the one thing I really want to clarify um, is, yeah, it's the 48-hour film project, and yeah, it's a competition, but it's for fun. You're doing this for fun. And if you're taking it super seriously and you're just trying to like win awards, you're not going to win them. It's just, it's, it's for fun. Like have fun. Do you find yourself saying that to a lot of people a lot of the time? I just like, you're kind of missing the point, missing the point if you're just trying to win an award. And it's like, it's about the experience. It's about meeting people. It's about networking. It's about learning skills, about acquiring new skills or testing things out. Or like, I just bought a new camera. I haven't used it yet. Cool, I'm just gonna like crash course myself on this camera over the weekend and learn how to use it and figure out some techniques. Oh man, I learned how to use my new camera because I was forced to use it on a project over the weekend, you know? Um, Oh, I'm, uh, I've never acted before. Um, I'd really love to just act in a film. Cool. Well, here's no, pr it's a no pressure situation. Just give it a try. I really enjoyed that. Uh, that might be something I pursue. Uh, you know, oh, I'm a, I'm a director. I've always directed, but I've, was, I've never been an actor or I've never been a sound guy or I've never been a camera guy. Okay, well, that's a problem. How are you going to be a director if you've never done the other roles? This gives you an opportunity to take on other roles in film production so that when you do direct somebody to do something, you have intimate knowledge of what they're doing. So how can you direct somebody to edit something if you've never cut anything? Uh, you know, badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, learning how to do the process is good. And if you can get all the steps down, you may just win if you do a good enough film and some rising upstart doesn't beat you on your third or fourth try. So what happens if you do win those projects? Okay, well, so there's the local city competitions, essentially, uh, the, those awards. And so 
say, for example, if you win Best Film uh, in Denver, then you get film uh, screened internationally at the International 48-Hour um, Film Project screening. So uh, last year it was in, uh, well, just this past March, uh, it was in Washington, D.C., uh, so I went and I represented Denver. It was amazing. Met a bunch of cool people, other city producers from around the world. And uh, so then that film competes against all the best international films. So this past year, there was 100 international films screened. And uh, like the top six of those were screened at the short film corner at Cannes, uh, which just happened like a week ago in France. Thank you for clarifying that. There is actually France. a Cannes, uh, Arkansas. Did you know that? I, did, I actually did know that. Yeah. Isn't that the worst thing you've ever heard? No, I mean, in America, that's what they do. They, uh, they just steal stuff from Europe, and, and they're just like, oh, it's ours now. Uh, well, now you're, you've insulted my, my hometown of Paris, Texas. So <laughs> okay. I'm, I, prepare, prepare for a duel. You know what? I can tell you're from Texas. I just felt that vibe from you. I'm actually from Elizabeth, Colorado. I lied to you to test you. Wow. Okay, even more boring. Okay, fair enough. All right. Now that um, he's insulted me twice over... We're going to have to take a commercial break and uh, sort this out through what we're going to call uh, game time. But game time is going to involve uh, dueling pistols this time. So I hope I hope you're prepared, Ilya. Okay. All right. Uh, any last words? Put up your dukes. All right. Before you put up your dukes, because I've tricked you thrice now, it's game time. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. All right. So because you're the 48-hour man, I thought it was the perfect time to... Bring out my favorite trivia subject, the show 24. Are you prepared to play <laughs> yeah, dude. 48 means 24? Yes, dude. I love 24. That show was amazing. Well, get your Jack Bauer on, buddy, because oh, it's dude, happening. Ready. Oh, okay. Dude. Key for all day, dude. All right. Key for all day. It's 48 means 24. Ilya, here are three questions about the show 24, and we'll give you the dude. rules after the first one. So... Here's question A. How many Emmys did the show win over its course of running? I have no idea, dude. All right, here are your options. 10, 20, 30, or 40. So it's A, 10, B, 20, C, 30, D, 40. Okay, 10. I think it's 10. That is incorrect. It was actually 20. You did not believe in Jack Bauer enough. I do. I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> you should. Uh, so, Ilya, I'm going to give you the going to give you the rundown on the show now. If you fail this quiz, this three question quiz, we kick you off the show, and then I tell people about the 48 hour film okay. festival. That's fine. And that's and that's just unfortunate for everyone. I got things to do, so that's fine. Well, you have two more chances to win. Okay. So. Here's question B. Okay. Kiefer Sutherland stars as Jack Bauer in 24, and he's doing some CIA, FBI kind of like things, you know, like <laughs> governmental d stuff to make sure that the terrorists don't win. Governmental stuff. Yeah. Okay. But he gets promoted in another TV show where he plays the president. <laughs> what is that TV show? Is it A, Scandal, B, The West Wing, C, Designated Survivor or D House of Cards. Uh, designated Survivor. That is correct. It is C Designated Survivor. Come on. Oh whoa, well, yeah. <laughs> you think you're a big guy because you for can... all day, dog. Let's go. You you okay? You're you're one for one, buddy. You're one for right. one. You got one shot at this. Yes, Designated Survivor was the answer. It's the show where you know the you know the capital blows up and he becomes president, even though he's that the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Okay. All right. Here's one that's gonna trip you up oh, for sure. Come on. Here's question C. All right. Let's get it. There's a fun fact about the show's time clock. The time clock that's always going in the background of the show. Yes. So is it? A, the time clock does not actually, it's actually faster than seconds go. It's, it's meant to intentionally, you know, make you anxious because you think time is going out. Or is it B, every time someone dies, the clock stops? Or is it C, the clock can't be synced to commercial breaks, so sometimes you'll hear commercial breaks with the time clocks if you recorded your DVR to the show 
there'll be the time clock going on in the background of those commercials? Or is it D, it's louder when Jack Bauer's on screen? Oh, man, that is a tough one. And now I only wish I could give you a phone a friend, but Julia's not here today, Ilya, so you got to do this all by yourself. You are today's Jack Bauer. All right, I'm going to have to go with B. That is correct. For just one second, after, the sh- after someone is shot on the show and someone dies, the clock stops, but it keeps going when it goes black. It's meant to tr- that was a trick question, and you, wow. you succeeded. So I'm very, we're very happy for you, Ilya. Congratulations. I get to continue. Thank you get you. to continue. After the commercial break, and that's only if you survive the duel we're about to have. <laughs> We'll see you right back after the commercial break, folks. Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Mike Rose from Grand Design, and I had a couple questions for you. Do you love R&B music? Do you love soul music? Or maybe you like hip-hop music. Do you ever wonder where it all comes from? Don't worry about it. Grand Design has got your back. We got this new documentary called BBBB, which stands for Breaking Barriers, Building Bridges. It's about the history of black music in America and the entire world and how it all relates to black civil rights. You don't want to miss this. It is coming out next week, July 6th on Grand Designs YouTube. We're releasing the first four episodes and it's going to be dope. Okay, what's a bear without ears? It's just a bee. Ah! Oh, Hunter, you're too kind. I know I'm the best host ever. Oh, just so kind. Oh, just so kind. Hunter's in here right now, but he will be every Wednesday, and so can your ad. That's right. We are here to share all the local film news. Any event that you have, we would love to promote it. Also, if you have a production that needs funding or that needs more exposure, hit us up at filmhound at gmail.com. We would love to chat with you. Remember to stay creative, Colorado. Okay, we're gonna go from a single to and we're back we both narrowly missed in that duel uh if he if he continues to misbehave we'll just have to try again after the show but until then we're here to talk about the denver film project and the best movie that Ilya has ever seen so Ilya. Tell me what's the best movie you've ever seen come out of a 48. And I'm going to zoom in. Ready? That was slick. All right. So uh, I went to the International 48-Hour Film Project screening uh, this past March. And honestly, it was the, uh, all the French films just really impressed me, um, all the international films. Um, the film that won uh, Best Film actually was from Rotterdam. Uh, however, my favorite film that I saw... Um, was a French film, and uh, uh, it loosely translates to The Ass Barber is uh, the name of the film. Uh, but what, So what does one have to do to become an ass barber? <laughs> Dude, I mean, you, like, you have to watch the film. I don't want to give anything away um, before you know, we, you know, we watch it right now. And essentially, the, the acting and the buy-in, the buy-in of the actors... It really draws you in. The, the writing is incredible. It's, the cinematography is amazing. The way that they use the elements in the film is incredible. Um, and uh, the, the two main actors, the two actors in the film, uh, they won uh, best, actors, best Actor together uh, at the international um, screenings. But uh, what I can tell you is... Um, what they drew, the genre that they drew was dark comedy. Um, the character is a hairdresser. Uh, the line of dialogue that they had to use is, there is a little left, would you like me to pack it? And the prop was a form. So now that you have those elements, let's watch the film and uh, watch how they use those elements to write the story, and then we can talk about it. I'm excited. If I only to learn what a what an ass barber is. All yes. right. So French movie, The Ass Barber, made in 48 hours. Let's do it. Roll it. C'est parti. 
<rire> Ma mère aussi, elle a un cheveu sur la langue, vous savez. C'est pas facile tous les jours pour elle. Du coup, être un coiffeur avec un cheveu sur la langue, bah, <rire> ça doit être chiant. Je n'ai pas de cheveu sur la langue, monsieur. Mais si. Bon. Oh. Ok. Il n'y a pas de souci, il n'y a pas de souci. La position, elle n'est pas pratique aussi. Voilà, j'ai fini. Je vais passer à la vérification du parfait. Levez-vous. Allez-y. Qu'est-ce que je dois faire maintenant So... What do you like about that No, just the way that they used all of the elements. It's very obvious that the film was written all that weekend. And they just like had fun with it. And... They came up with a really interesting creative concept, very outside of the box. But it's very apparent to me that they took those elements and they made the film that weekend. They Again, it's like, are you trying to win this thing? Or are you just trying, like, if you're trying to win and you're, like, coming up with stuff beforehand and coming up with concepts and lining things up, you know, I don't think you're going to get as much out of it as from, like, oh, these are the elements that I got. How do I make this work? And how do I really integrate these things and come up with something interesting? That's what's going to give you the best experience. Mm. So I agree. It does feel like it's made in 48 hours. And it, that's not like an insult to me either. Uh, I, I really clearly see you see that as a compliment because of how like they're, how inspired they were. Yeah. And how fast they, and made, they made it. It really feels like it was a spark of innovation. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like... They did a lot of things right. It's one location. They weren't shooting all over the place. It's just shot in one room. And so it's like one room and a bathroom. So it's like it's, there's, it's such a simplistic setup, you know, and they probably shot it with one camera. And, you know, so it's like how do you keep it simple? Uh, you know, like that's, that's the key here is like what can you do with, li with like the limited resources that you have? Well, speaking of limited resources, I wanted to ask you what your advice would be for these filmmakers. So you probably see all the bad editing, uh, yeah. bad sound mixing. Which I've done, personally. Which, you know, I've done it too. <laughs> Not knocking on anybody, trust me. But you've seen all the, all the things that people do wrong. What are some ways to fix those, since you are someone who's seen it from both sides, from yeah. the person who does it to the person who sees it? No, yeah, that's a really great question. Um, like, again, keep it simple. Um, you know, there's, there's people that, that think like, oh, I have to have a giant team or I have to, you know, I need to shoot at five locations for my film to be interesting. Like, they're, they're very ambitious. Cool, you know? I think you're going you're gonna to have an easier time it, the more simple you make it. So it's like, cool, um, we have a single location. We've already got that sorted out beforehand. Um, and so we're just going to make it work at this location. Whatever it is, we're going to apply our needs to this location. Um, like there was a, a film from China this past uh, year um, that uh, it was, uh, they had three very distinct locations in the film. However, they were all shot in the same apartment. But they made it look different by uh, changing the aesthetic. So one had like a 90s aesthetic, one had like an 80s aesthetic, and then one had an infomercial like aesthetic. Hmm. So it's like, you know, different, different grain, different aspect ratio, whatever, different lighting. But they just made it look different. But it's all obviously shot in the same apartment. So, you know, be creative with, with the least amount of things. What do you think would be the advice you'd give to people who, you know, they, they have a certain idea or maybe they're, make, they, they make movies in a certain genre, they're a comedy person, and suddenly they get action or they get horror or something like yeah. that? Yeah. No, that's a great question. Um, comedy is the hardest genre. So it's like, if you just draw comedy, like, good luck. That is so hard. But... If you're making a film in 48 hours and it's a horror film, it's going to be funny because it's low budget, you know, and it's like, it's just going to be funny. So 
that's like the beauty. The beauty of that whole genre thing is like, okay, well, what do we? What can we do? Okay, well, we got to figure out props now. Oh, well, we have like, you know, oh, we're just gonna, we're, we got horror, so let's just like make a bunch of fake blood and like how ridiculous can we make it? You know, and it's like, I don't know. That's that's the beauty of it. That's like the fun part about it is being again being pushed out of your comfort zone and just trying to make something. Now, with that in mind. What do you think about the people who plan ahead? So there's people who maybe like get certain elements together and they plan everything ahead. Yeah. What, what What is your response to that? You're just, you're not going to get what the point of the weekend is out of it. There are certain things that you do need to prep beforehand, which is like get your team together, get a skeleton crew together. Be like, okay, well, you know, I've got my, my camera, I got my sound guy. Uh, you know, or whatever. I've got grips, I got gaffers, I got runners, um, I have talent, whatever. Just have your pool together. Um, maybe you have a bra- have a meeting, brainstorm already. What kind of weird talents does everyone have? People don't do one thing. There's people will do multiple things. There's somebody that's an actor but also does sound. There's somebody that is a cinematographer but they've already done uh, they've done some writing. You know. Not everyone does one thing. You want to know all the capabilities of the people around you. Have an open mind. Make sure that they are primed to take on another role if they need to, or take on multiple roles. You know, step into something they may be uncomfortable with, or give them an opportunity to step into something that they they want to learn. Um, The other thing you want to prep is locations. Have a home base. Have a place where everybody's crashing, maybe. not necessarily saying you have to shoot there, but have a home base where everybody gathers, you know, and uh, that, you know, that is really helpful. Figure out, you know, if you do, if you are going to shoot in, uh, so you have like access to a, an old church or your family owns property or you have family friends that have a cool car or anything like that. Yet just get that on deck. You don't have to use it, but hit them up and just be like, hey, you know, I'm doing a film this weekend. It might be cool to have have uh, your old vintage Porsche in the in in a shot. Could I call you if I if I need to use your car for like one shot? You know, just have some things on deck, and then when it comes to that weekend, and you draw that genre and you get the elements, then you know, hit the whiteboard and just start throwing ideas at the wall. So there's now a 72 hour film festival from. Pueblo, and it's yeah. going to be run by Kick-Ass Films. Do you hate yeah. them and want them to die? Um, look, those guys are really cool. Uh, they participated last year in the 48. <laughs> um, they are extremely ambitious. Um, I really like what they're doing. Um, they're just doing their own thing. It's totally separate from what we're doing. Um, but I just those guys are very cool. Like Dave that runs it. Um, He's super talented. All the all the people that he's working with are very talented, and uh, yeah, they they like their film from last year uh, was, like I said, incredibly ambitious. Um, and uh, no, I support them. I, and uh, what they're doing is just different. It's a different type of thing. Yeah. Do you think that this will in the future this will be more of a thing that you can see on TikTok, or do you think that this will be something that will have prestige and will live in different forms? Oh, it's a really good question. Um, you know, again, my job as a city producer is to facilitate the the format created by corporate based out of Washington, D.C. Yeah. So th- they are the ones that are dictating the format. Now, is it going to continue in this same vein and the same way that it's been continuing? No, it's going to evolve over time. So, I mean, originally um, it was in one city and now it's global. Uh, originally you um, would have to go to a drop-off location to hand in your film and it had to be on time within the 48 and you had to physically hand in your film uh, like on a thumb drive for example or on a burned DVD well now it's all online and you have to upload your file and make sure that it's uploaded and you have to make sure your file begins uploading before the cutoff time and then it checks the file and make sure it's the original file you uploaded so it is going to evolve and change the way that it's executed over time. Absolutely. What was your favorite film from last year 
at the Denver Film uh, Project and why did it inspire you? Yeah, so I remember getting all the films and uh, I w it was my first year as a city producer. So I was just like, okay, uh, I'm just going to binge watch every single film. So afterwards, I watched. Did you do it all right, like the moment that they started coming in? Uh, no. Um, I, I, after they all came in, I downloaded all of them, and then I just watched them all in succession for four hours straight. Yeah. Okay. It was amazing, and so yeah, immediately after watching all of the films, I was like, "This is the one. This one's gonna win best film." And again, I'm not a judge either. There's three judges. You know, I'm not a judge. I'm just running things, and then the judges have their criteria. And, and they're, they're judging the films based on different merits. So I'm just like facilitating. So, but immediately I was like, this is the best film because it was so funny. And uh, it was uh, Life's Great with Mr. Smoodles uh, by Jace Paradin. And they had a team of three people. And uh, it was just like it had, they had a, a sock puppet. And it was just super nostalgic, 80s aesthetic, um, VHS type and I don't know. I just, I loved it. I just, it was just so, um, it was just so fun and ridiculous and didn't take themselves seriously. Now, next year for your city producer, what are you hoping for this year from the film festival? And what are you hoping for from the submissions you get? Wow. Um, again, my biggest hope is that people are doing this for fun and for the experience and not to try to win something. Like my main goal is to have people come together. So I've been hosting screenings and I'll be hosting like a happy hour. Um, and uh, so it's just like, I, I just want people to get together, meet people, network and have fun and have this fun experience. That's my main goal. Hey, did you end up with some kind of cool thing at the end of it that you have to show for, for your weekend? You know, yeah, that's amazing. Is it better than sitting at home playing video games all weekend and having nothing to show for it? Maybe. I don't know. Like, I want to facilitate the experience. That's the main thing. Okay. Well, you heard from the source, folks. It is Ilya Kushner. He is the city producer for the Denver 48-Hour Film Project. You can see him. July 29th to the 31st, and you can see him at the live screening, which is going to be when and where? Uh, it's all going to be at the Bug Theater. Um, and so, again, the filmmaking weekend is the last weekend of July, which is uh, the 29th to the 31st. And then uh, we'll be doing the screenings um, starting August 2nd, Friday, August 2nd. Uh, most likely the second and the third. So it all depends on how many uh, groups we have. Um, and then there's also going to be a best of screening uh, where we screen all the films that have won awards. And that will be on uh, Sunday, September 18th will be the best of screenings. And is there an award this year for a person who had the most fun? You know, maybe I need to make a care. Uh, maybe I need to make my own category. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, you hear here first, folks. So anyway, Ilya Kushner, thank you for being on the show. Is there anything you want to leave with people? Um, no, thank you for your time. I just want people to try something new and get out of their comfort zones. That's it. All right. Well, no matter where you are, you can do a 48-hour film project. Check your city listings. Check where the closest one is. It doesn't matter if you're in Denver. I live in Castle Rock, and people film for 48 hours there, as well as in Fort Collins, Greeley. They can all come together in Denver for one special night and show all sorts of movies they made in a weekend. And just remember, folks, no matter wherever you're making your 48, you got to stay creative. Thank you.